Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters, we'll be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening. And the heading of this teaching, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we very well know, the Most High searches the reins of the heart to see if in fact what's in the heart. He searches the heart to see if in fact that we're going to follow his ways or are we going to be contrary to his ways. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. We see that the Bible reference this candle as being the spirit of the Most High God. So we know the spirit reflects those things that's contained in the heart. It's going to bring that forth, whatever that may be. So we have to keep our focus on those things that's contained in the field. We have to make sure that we're receiving our own daily and tilling the ground. See, we have to understand tilling the ground, we're separating the true doctrine of God from the doctrine of these men of this world. We have to always make that separation. We have to always till the ground to make sure that there's no other seed planted in the field opposite of the one that the Most High God has planted within us. So without further ado, I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper, and as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. And we'll start right here, my brothers and sisters, at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, and it's recorded. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, of the heart. So we see that the Most High God is always going to search the reins of our heart to see if, in fact, if we're going to follow his ways or choose his ways or the ways of the world. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. From here, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll hit verse 11. And it's recorded. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Question. Even so the things of Yahweh, knoweth no man, but however, the spirit of God, exactly the point. So we see clearly no man knows the thoughts of God, but the spirit of God, keep that in mind. So we don't want to place ourselves in a position thinking that we know more than God. A lot of us, a lot of our brothers and sisters do exactly that. That's why a lot of us are stuck in calling these church buildings. And a lot of us have this mindset that we know of other ways to get into the kingdom opposite of the ways of God. It's, it's clear that a lot of us try to compare ourselves with the Most High God, which is clearly the wrong thing to do. Let's reiterate this text again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 22. For what man knoweth the things of man? save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even the things of Yahweh know of no man, but however, the spirit of God. So from here, let's go to Judith. And we'll pull some information from Judith right here in the Apocrypha, chapter eight. And we'll hit verse 14. And it's recorded. For you cannot find the depth of the heart of man neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out Yahweh that have made all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the creator, our guide, to anger. So we see clearly we don't want to place ourselves in a position to provoke the Most High God to anger because of our mindset. A lot of us, again, think that we, we could go about different other ways of getting to the Most High God's kingdom or go about 
um, teaching his word according to our mindset, according to the imaginations and the thoughts of our hearts. That's stupidity. We have to understand that his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. Keep that in mind. So from here, let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12. And it's recorded. And including, it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Spirit of God will not do good, neither will he do evil. So you can hear a lot of these conversations come from Christians. I mean, this, this, is, this is constant, coming from a Christian, especially those that truly believe that they're in the house of God walking into this building. See, we have to understand something, my brothers and sisters. If our, mind, if our mindset is that this church building is the house of God, then we have received or we have, we are now those of us that believe that are in our kingdom. See, you can't receive anything opposite of that if providing that's the mindset. If that's your mindset that this building that you frequent every week is the house of God, then you truly have an extreme problem. Because we have to understand the things that are seen are temporal. We have to keep our focus on that. The things that are seen are temporal. So if we constantly believe that these church buildings that we go in are the houses of God and we're receiving truth from these men that's telling us these fables, then we have an extreme problem. We need to search the scriptures as, as it's recorded here in the word of God and to see what thus says the Most High God. We can't continue on down this path, my brothers and sisters, if we're seeking after the, a spot into the Most High God's kingdom. We have to read and study for ourselves. It's important that we watch it, we learn from. It's important that we open up the Bible to see what thus says the Most High God. It's extremely important that we do this because we can't have it our way. Keep that in mind. No matter how much you want to, you're not going to have it your way. So let's reiterate this text again. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 12, and it's recorded. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves, that say in their heart, the Spirit of God will not do good, neither will he do evil. So from here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 94. And verse 7. And it's recorded. Yet they say, the Spirit of God shall not see, neither shall the guide of, our, of Jacob regard it. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, there is nothing that we have done. There is nothing that we are doing that God has absolutely no idea that we're doing. I want you to keep that in your, your mind. Everything that we have done, everything that we're doing, God knows all. Keep that in mind. Because any time that we venture far from that thought, then we're only lying and fooling ourselves. We have to understand who created everything that we see, including ourselves, and that's the Most High God. The Most High God can do whatever he chooses with what he has created. You have to understand that. So if you are thinking, and if it's a thought running through your head that there's things that you're doing or things that you have done that God haven't seen or God uh, have no idea of, then you're 100% fooling and lying to yourself. Keep that in mind. Yet they say the Spirit of God shall not see, neither shall the guide of Jacob regard it. For men, let's go to Psalms chapter 10. In verse 11, and it's recorded. He had said in his heart, Yahweh hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. 
from here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 22 and verse 13. And it's recorded. And thou sayest, how doeth Yahweh know? Can he judge through dark clouds? You see these questions here? We have to understand the Most High God is all powerful and all omnipotent. Keep that in mind. He can be everywhere at one time. I want you to keep that in mind. He is everywhere at one time. We have to get out of the mindset, my brothers and sisters, thinking that we're, we're hiding things from ourselves and from others because this truth will bring all of what you have done to the light. See, because if you're searching and seeking after a spot into his kingdom, these things have to be brought forth. They have to be brought forth. If you're to the left side of the plumb line and you have a thought that you could conceal things that you have done from God, then you're sadly mistaken. These things have to be revealed. You have to confess those sins that you've done and turn and do the works that's meant for repentance and follow after the ways of God. That's clear. See, because if you're not doing that, then you're going to keep to yourself. And if you keep to yourself these things that you are not wanting to reveal unto the Most High God, keep in mind, he's aware of everything that you have done. The objective is for you to acknowledge that. That's the objective. To turn to do the works meant for repentance, to remove yourself from the sin business. We have to understand this because, again, if you're not willing to acknowledge those things that you have done unto God, then you're not willing to get into his kingdom. It's just that cut and dry. There's no gray area to this. It's either you to the left side or the plumb line or the right side. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 15. And it's recorded. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel, exactly the point, from the Spirit of God, and their works are in the dark. And they say, who seeth us? And including who knoweth us? It's just what we had just got through speaking about. We have to get out of that mindset because, trust me, you have people that believe that. You have people that believe that God, they can conceal things that they have done that they don't want God to know anything about. You have people that actually believe that. And that's the stupidest thing that one can think. Because then that suggests that you know more than God. And we clearly know, we clearly know that that's a stupid and ignorant thought, if providing you have even allowed that to enter into your mind. Let's reiterate that text again. Isaiah 29, 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Spirit of God and their works are in the dark. And including, they say, who seeth us? And including, who knoweth us? From here, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. And it's recorded. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Spirit of God, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. You say, I clear that is, because that's all we can do. We think we could hide things from God and continue on a path and of destruction and eating abominable things and doing things that we have no business doing and thinking that we could achieve and receive a spot into his kingdom. From here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29. Let's hit verse 19. And it's recorded. And it come to pass, and it come to pass 
when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. I'm just pausing for effect. From here, let's go back to Proverbs 20 and 27, and we're going to reiterate that text, the heading of our teaching. We're going to reiterate this text. The spirit of man is the candle of the spirit of God, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah and pull some information. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. And it's recorded. I, the Spirit of God, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Exactly the point. See, because you're going to be, we're going to be judged according to that. Whatever that may be. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So that candle, that spirit, is going to search the reins of the heart to see, in fact, what's lying in the heart. Is it the ways of God or is it the ways of the world? What is being manifest in the heart? What are the imaginations and the thoughts of the heart? Only God knows. See, we have to understand that the Most High God created everything you see, including ourselves. I want you to understand that. we I made mention of that earlier part of this teaching. See, if we, if we, start, if we start to sidetrack away from that truth, then we're going to have a problem in our walk because now we're going to be thinking contrary to the ways of God because of all of these other accusations and statements that we are hearing and the things that we are allowing to enter into our hearts and minds. And it's going to cause a division. It's going to separate us from the ways of God. And if it separates us from the ways of God, then we'll start to walk the path of death. That's what we don't want. See, because anything, I don't care what it is, contrary to God's way, it's death. There's no other way of looking at it. Because you have two realms here. You have life and you have death. Which are you professing? What path are you walking? What imagination and what thought lies in the heart? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Let's reiterate this text again. Jeremiah 17, 9. I'm sorry, Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the spirit of God, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and including desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jehovah. Only Jehovah, only the Most High God knows if, if in fact that we're going to follow after his ways or not. Only he knows that. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 44, and we'll hit verse 21. And it's recorded. Shall not Yahweh search this out? Question. For he knoweth the secrets of the heart, exactly the point. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. He's going to search the reins of the heart. He's going to find out whether or not you're going to be true to his ways or true to the ways of the world. Whichever you choose, that will be your election. Is it the path of righteousness or is it the path of death? Shall not Yahweh search this out? 
for he knoweth the secrets of the heart. From here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 2, verse 15. And it's recorded. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. 16. In the day when Yahweh shall judge the secrets of men by salvation, the anointing one according to the message, to my message. This Bible is real clear. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. What's the thoughts of your heart, my brothers and sisters? Are we diligently seeking after the Most High God? Or are we fooling ourselves? Are we searching the scriptures for the truth? Are we doing our due diligence to receive our own daily? Are we tilling the ground from whence we've come? Which is it? What path are we walking? What's truly in our heart? Do we truly want to walk the ways or Receive the ways of God or the ways of the world. What's the addiction? Is there any addiction to the world? These are questions that we have to answer within ourselves, my brothers and sisters. We can't be slack when we're following the ways of God because keep in mind, we were 100% doing the things of the world. We should be double that now that we are learning what the truths are and finding out that we have been deceived, we should even want to work even much harder to understand the ways of God because we have been deceived all this time. A lot of us are still being deceived even as we speak. Some of us are being pulled away from the truth of God's word. We can't allow that. Our salvation depends on this Bible. Our salvation depends on Jehovah. It's a, it depends on the word of God. 100%. Not 90, not 80. 100%. It's the only way that we can receive life. Period. I want you to stay with me, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 32. And we'll hit verse 8. And it's recorded. But however, there is a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty, giveth them understanding. Exactly the point. It giveth understanding. I want you to clearly understand this here, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Job 33 and verse 4. And it's recorded. The breath of God hath made me and the inspiration of the Almighty hath given me life. You see how clear it is? Real clear. The Spirit of God hath made me and the inspiration of the Almighty hath given me eternity. From here, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Spirit of God Yahweh formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the inspiration of eternity, and man became a living soul. It's clear, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Job 34. And we'll hit verses 14 and 15. 
and it's recorded. If providing, he set his heart upon man. If providing, he gather unto himself his spirit, his inspiration, and his breath. All flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. Exactly the point. Why? Because his spirit has been removed. See, we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, if providing we're seeking a spot into the kingdom of God, we're going to do those things that bring about life. We're going to do those things that's recorded here in the word of God that's required of us. We're going to do those things. Now, that being said, either we're going to be successful in doing that or we're going to return back to the earth from once we've come. I want you to clearly understand what I just said to you. If providing, we're seeking eternity. If providing, we're cho we have chosen and following the ways of God. This is by the only way we can receive eternal life. It's only through and by his spirit, his word, Jehovah. It's only through that that we can achieve that goal. If providing, we're not seeking after God and we hold to what's going on in these prison houses, then our spirit is going to return. I'm back with this body from the dirt from which it came. I want you to clearly understand that because at that point, once that flesh has expired and has served its a, and have reached its appointed time, anything that you should have done according to the ways of God that you have never, let's just say, gotten around to doing, you have completely 100% shortchanged yourself. Because now you have to be bought forth. I want you to clearly understand that. You have to be bought forth. You don't want your spirit to become stillborn because if it becomes stillborn, it will die. See, the first death, my brothers and sisters, is the death of the flesh. Keep that in mind. That's the first death. The second death is the death of the spirit. We know that the spirit cannot die, but we need to understand with that body, it goes to the lake of fire. Keep that in mind. It wasn't brought forth according to the spirit. We have to understand what's going on, my brothers and sisters. In order for us to be a recipient or have a spot to receive a spot into his kingdom, we must be brought forth according to his spirit. Period. There ain't no other way of looking at it. There ain't no other options that you have. There is none. You have two options. Either follow the ways of God or follow the ways of the world. You have to pick and you're going to pick one of those two. It's not maybe or I might. No, you're going to pick one of the two sides. It's clear because the imagination and the thought of your heart is going to lead you down that path. Whatever that may be. If he set his heart upon man, if providing he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath. That's a full thought. Verse 15. All flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust. From here, let's go to Psalms 104. Psalms 104 and verse 29. And it's recorded. Thou hideth thy face, they are troubled. Thou taketh away their breath, they die. Watch this. And return to their dust. The spirit of man 
is the candle of the Lord. He is going to search the heart to see what those things that are contained within. The objective, my brothers and sisters, are to have those things that's recorded here in the word of God. Keep in mind, it's required of us. If there are any newcomers here in this teaching, we must follow the ways of God. It's required of us to do such. Let's pivot just for a moment. We'll come back. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And it's recorded. And now, Israel, what doeth the Spirit of God thy guide require of thee? But to fear the Spirit of God thy guide, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Spirit of God thy guide with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13, to keep the commandments, the instructions of the Spirit of God and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11 and 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Spirit of God thy guide and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. From here let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Now these are the commandments, the instructions, the statutes, and the judgments, the doctrines and teachings which the Spirit of God your guide commanded, instructed to teach you that ye may, might do them in the land whether thou go to possess it. That thou might have desired the Spirit of God, thy guide, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son, sons, all the days of thy life, for thought, and that thy days may be prolonged. Eternal life. These are the things that's required of us, my brothers and sisters. What path are we walking? What's lying within our hearts? How do we really feel about those things that we're learning here in the word of God? Are we reverting back to our old way? God only knows, my brothers and sisters. Are we diligently seeking after the Most High God? Are we doing our due diligence to do those things that's required of us and that's recorded here in the Word of God? What's the line within our heart? How do we really feel about those things that's of God? Let's go back to our teaching. So we'll reiterate Psalms 104 and 29. And it's recorded, Thou hideth thy face, they are troubled. Thou taketh away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Verse 30, Thou sendeth forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. Exactly the point. Providing we're seeking after the Most High God, providing we're doing our due diligence, those things that's required of us. From here, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, and let's hit verse 12 and 13, and it's recorded. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and including as a discerner of the thoughts, watch this, and the intents of the heart. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. What's in your heart, my brothers and sisters? Only God knows how diligently, how diligent you are 
if providing you are seeking after his ways and even after him. What's the intent of the heart? What's the imaginations? What is the thoughts? Verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 11. And we'll hit right here at verse 4. And it's recorded. But with righteousness shall the judge. Excuse me. But however, with righteousness shall he judge the poor. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And including with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. There's a lot of us, my brothers and sisters, that are diligently doing our due diligence to seek after the ways of God and doing those things that's required of us. We have to make sure that we hold to the right side of the plumb line. Despite whether our family members are trying to pull us away from the Most High God or to make that separation or trying to convince us to celebrate this and to celebrate that and trying to remove us from the ways of God to be brought back into the ways of the world. See, the objective, my brothers and sisters, if providing family members and friends don't want to uh, join a board up on this, on this journey, we have to walk away and let them die, providing they hold to the ways of the world. You can love them while they're here. but not never allow them to pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. That's their objective. Their objective is to pull you away from truth, providing they don't want to learn what the truths are in God's word. You have family members that do things like that. You have family members that hold to the ways of the world. They do everything. They hold birthday parties for the dead. I've, I'm telling you. My wife's uh, uh, sister, her family, I'm telling you, they, they do it like clockwork. They will go out to a cemetery in a heartbeat and throw a party for someone that's not even there. I want you to clearly understand that. The scripture says, let the dead bury the dead. We have to understand what's going on, my brothers and sisters. Here, let's pivot. Let's, let's go to it. Elder T will tell you in a heartbeat. If I tell you, we, we got to go to it. So we have to go to it. Luke chapter 9. Right here. Luke 9 and 60. And it's recorded. Salvation said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. But however, go thou and preach the kingdom of Yahweh. I mean, these people, they'll throw birthday parties just like it's nobody's business. They'll bring everything that you would see one bring at a live party. I'm not kidding you. I kid you not. For the dead. They'll leave bottles, uh, drinking bottles, laying up against the, the monument or the tombstone. I'm telling you, this, this, we hold to these ways, my brothers and sisters. The Most High God searches the heart. He searches the heart. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. He's going to search the heart for those imaginations and what those things are that's within the heart. Is it about him and his way or is it about the world? That's the only thing it could contain. It's going to either contain one of those two things. Either the ways of the Most High God 
or it's going to contain the, the things and the ways of this world. It's going to be one or the other. This is what goes on, my brothers and sisters. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So let's go back to Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 4. We'll reiterate this text. However, with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and including with the breath, the inspiration of his lips, shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness and girdle of his reins. From here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And it's recorded. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the message. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and included also to the Greek. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, if we're doing those things that's contrary to the ways of God and we're trying to get ourselves together, we have to give up this life for the life of Christ, period. We can't shortcut ourselves. We can't do any of these things that's going to cause us to try and mix things. We can't do that. Either we're going we're gonna to serve one spirit or we're going to serve another. Either we're going to serve the Most High God or we're going to serve the ways of the world and the spirit of error. Which one, my brothers and sisters? We have to make our election sure. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the message of Christ, but as the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth for thought, to the Jew first and including also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. From here, let's go to Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 14. And it's recorded, The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but however wounded, a wounded spirit, who can bear? The spirit of man will nour nourish his infirmity, his sickness, his disease. However, a broken spirit, who can bear? The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and including the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. From here, let's go to Proverbs chapter 15. And we'll hit verse 13. And it's recorded. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but however by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is wounded, the spirit is broken. The heart of him that understandeth Understanding seeketh knowledge, but however the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. God is going to search the heart. From here, let's go to Sirach. To some Ecclesiasticus, verse 13, uh, chapter 13, I'm sorry, chapter 13, and we'll hit verse 25 and 26, and it's recorded. The heart of a man changeth his countenance, whether it be for good or evil. And a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. A cheerful countenance is a token of a heart that is in prosperity for thought. And the finding out of parables is the worrisome, is the labor of the mind. So this last section, my brothers and sisters, 
I like to go to Candle of the Wicked. And it's labeled Candle of the Wicked. And we'll go and start this section off at Job. Job 21. And verse 17. And it's recorded. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? Yahweh distributeth sorrows in his anger. Exactly the point. See, because we, we understand one thing, my brothers and sisters, that we're contrary to the ways of God. That spirit, it's that light that was once shining is going to be put out. See, if we're going to hold to the ways of the world, we're going to walk in darkness. We have no light. We have nothing, absolutely nothing to guide us through this world. Nothing. We're 100% naked, period. We have nothing to guide us. We have, we have no counsel. We're going on the thoughts of our own uh, heart, and we're, we're going to our own imagination of what we think this life should be for us. See, anything that's opposite of the Most High God is destruction and death and torment and, and all of these things. We have to understand these things. Why? It's contrary to his ways. Now, does that give those of us that are seeking after a spot into his kingdom a green light and saying, well, these things won't happen to us? We're going to have some trials, my brothers and sisters. A lot of us are going through them now as we speak. The objective is to hold to what you know to be true in the word of God. See, we have to understand those of us that have been a recipient of his spirit. There is no way out of this contract. There is no way out of this contract. We have to hold to it. We have to hold to it until the last breath on this planet. We have to hold to it. So we have to understand those things that we have to be tried because that dross, that sin has to be pulled out of us. We have to make sure, God has to make sure that it's us that he's seeking after. That's why it's so important for us to hold to the ways of God, not to the ways of the world, providing we're seeking a spot into his kingdom. These are the things that we've agreed upon, my brothers and sisters. Like it or not, we have, a, we have sealed this contract with our God. We have sealed it. So let's reiterate this text again. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributeth sorrows in his anger. From here, let's go to Job 31, and we'll hit verse 2 and 3, and it's recorded. For what portion of Yahweh is there from above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction of the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? We have to understand that, my brothers and sisters. Do if not he see my ways and count all my steps? If providing I have walked with vanity or if my foot have hasted to deceit, watch this, let me be weighed in an even balance that Yahweh may know my integrity. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. From here, let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 12. And we'll hit verse 46. And it's recorded. The ruler of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. From here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 18. We're going to hit verses 5 and 6, and it's recorded. 
Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and including the spark of his fire shall not shine. Exactly the point. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. What's in your heart, my brothers and sisters? Are you diligently seeking after the Most High God? Let's go to verse 18. And it's recorded. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 90. And we'll hit verses 7 through 9. And it's recorded. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 9. And it's recorded. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Exactly the point. Why? We're to the left side of the plumb line. We wanted to have absolutely nothing to do with the ways of the Most High God. Why? Because we was contrary to everything that's recorded in the Word. We thought we could live a life such as the imaginations of our hearts have rendered unto us, which are the ways of the world, thinking that all we have to do is be nice to people and come to find out that we were caught up into this matrix in a system that we truly believed that was our way of living, when in fact we were found sleeping in this deep slumber, never to awake to the truth of what's recorded to the, in the Word of God. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. He is going to search the reins of our hearts, whether we like that or not, because those things that are there have to be revealed. It has to be brought forth, because if it's contained in that seed, then you're going to bring forth that which is contained in it. Let's reiterate this text again, 13.9. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. From here, let's go to Proverbs 24. As we wind down this teaching, Proverbs 24 and 20. And it's recorded. For there shall be no reward of the evil man for thought. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. From here, let's go to Psalms, chapter 11, verse 6. And it's recorded. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and including a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Why? They were hold, they was holding to the left side of the plumb line. From here, let's go to Matthew. Pull some information. Matthew 25. In verse 8, and it's recorded. And including the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil for thought, for our lamps are gone out. I'm just pausing for effect. 
for me let's go to Isaiah Isaiah chapter 3 and we'll hit verse 11 and it's recorded war unto the wicked it shall be ill with him for the reward of his powers shall be given him exactly the point see we have to get out of the mindset of thinking that uh, that God won't punish us for our for our doings. This is the whole purpose of these teachings. This is the whole purpose of us reading and studying to show ourselves approved unto the Most High God, to search the scriptures for the truths of God's word, to find out those things that God will and will not do. We have to understand, because there's only one thing that God will not do according to his word, and that's change. Keep that in mind. He will not change. So if we're not aware of what's going on, we need to clearly understand what's going on according to his word. Let, let me show you something. Let's pivot just for a moment. Let's go to Psalms 89. Psalms 89 and 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. From here, let's go to Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Spirit of God. I change not for a thought. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. From here, let's go to Hebrews 13.9. I'm sorry, 13.8. Salvation, the anointing one, the same yesterday and today and forever. Can't get much clearer than that, my brothers and sisters. Can't get much clearer than that. So let's go back to Isaiah uh, chapter 3, verse 11. We'll reiterate this text. War unto the wicked. It shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. From here, let's go to Isaiah 65. And we'll hit 13 through 16. I'm sorry, 13 through 15. And it's recorded. Therefore, for this reason, thus saith the Creator, Yahweh. Remember, behold, my servants shall eat, shall learn. But however, ye shall be hungry. Remember, behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Remember, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Remember, behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart. But however, ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and including shall howl for the vexation of spirit. Verse 15, and ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the creator, Yahweh, shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. So we'll go to this last text, my brothers and sisters, and it's found right here in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 10. And it's recorded. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So my brothers and sisters, as we see the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The Most High God is going to search the reins of our heart. He's going to see what those imaginations and thoughts are. He's going to find out whether they be of his ways or the ways of the world. Our due diligence on our behalf, my brothers and sisters, is for us to continually search the scriptures for the truth, to continually receive our Oma daily. We have to till the ground from whence we've come. We have to always be learning of our God 
and doing those things that's required of us. We have to obey this word because it's our only life source. It's the very thing that supplies life to us. Outside of that, as we have always known, we are completely 100% dead. So it's about our heart, my brothers and sisters. We have to apply our hearts to learn the ways of God. We have to give up this life for the life of Christ. We have to continually search the scriptures for his truth. We have to continually breathe. We have to continually breathe, my brothers and sisters, because the more that we breathe, the more that we live. The more that we till the ground and to receive our omen, the more that we grow in the word of God. He's going to search our hearts continuously. That is going to happen until we are dead. So as always, my brothers and sisters, till the ground from whence you've come. Receive your omen daily. I can't express this enough. And by all means, please never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.